So, you have a movie for me? Yes, yes sir, sir, I do. Wait, why are there two of you? Oh, well, we got to chatting, and we have a very exciting once-in-a-lifetime double feature opportunity here. Two absolute blockbusters. What are you talking about? Well, my movie's about the popular kids' doll Barbie. And mine's a historical drama about J. Robert Oppenheimer, father of the atomic bomb. Okay, first of all, you guys have chosen some misleading shirts for this pitch meeting, and second, that Oppenheimer one doesn't really sound like a blockbuster. Christopher Nolan would be directing. Oh, okay, there it is. But how is this a good pairing of movies? Well, we got to talking and we realized our scripts are basically asking the same question. Which is, what if men has too much power? Oh, I thought we said, what if men have too much power? That's basically the same thing. Wow. So anyway, tell me about these movies. Let's start with the depressing one. Wide-scale death depressing or Hollywood only making movies based on existing intellectual property with a proven track record of financial success depressing? Mm, let's go with the second one. Well, the movie's gonna follow a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, right? And let me tell you, life in plastic, it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> can you brush her hair and undress her everywhere? Oh my god, what? What? What kind of movie do you think I'm pitching you? No, it's it's Barbie Girl. Yeah? By Aqua. All right, my name's not Aqua, and I'm not going anywhere. Never mind, that's, I apologize. Disgusting. Disgusting. So anyway, one day while Barbie's having a big old Barbie party in Barbie land, she's gonna start thinking about death. Oh my god. And then she gets flat feet and cellulite, so she's like, something is off here. Okay. So with the help of this weird Barbie, she's gonna go through a portal into the real world and Ken's gonna come along for the ride. Oh, what's the real world like? Sometimes it's like the real world and sometimes it's like a magical cartoon. Oh, fun! And so Barbie's gonna head to the Mattel offices and turns out it's just run by a bunch of buffoons and also like just men. Very funny. Yeah, this is gonna be a big middle finger to powerful executives everywhere. Hey! Hey, what's up? And so this is gonna be kind of Mattel acknowledging the role that Barbie has played in like creating unrealistic body standards for women. Uh-huh. And also saying that actually Barbie Barbies aren't really about that, they're actually empowering. How's that gonna work? Well, the best way I could describe it is that our partners at Mattel like eating cake, but also they like having cake. So if there's a way to do both of those, they'd just be thrilled. Oh yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Why would that be a problem? Yeah, it'll kind of be like any harm that they've caused in the past wasn't so bad because it wasn't really intentional. They're just kind of silly. We should get Will Ferrell to play the head guy. People can't hate Will Ferrell. That's a good plan. So anyway, in the real world, Ken is gonna stumble upon the fact that the patriarchy exists, so he he's gonna think that's pretty cool and bring it back to Barbie land. Uh-oh. Yeah, so while the Barbies were in charge of Barbie land before, now the Kens are gonna be in charge and main Barbie's gonna have to go restore the natural order. Gotcha. And so that's really gonna let us drive home this message in the movie that the patriarchy is kinda messed up for women. Good message, sure. Yeah. The patriarchy, no good. Not good at all. Totally hear you, absolutely. Very unfair system for sure. This whole patriarchy thing, it's bad. It's not good at all. That's... Uh -huh. And if you really think about it, the patriarchy is actually, it's not a good thing. I feel like you've gotten the point across. It's just not really fair, is it? The patriarchy, I mean. Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I understand and agree. Patriarchy, more like not good yarky. Am I gonna get in trouble if I say even though I totally agree with the message, this is kind of a lot? Yeah, probably. Hey, check this out. What are you doing? Did you just literally hit me across the head with the message? I did, yeah. So the last chunk of the movie is going to mainly focus on that and be mostly talking. <laughs> oh, same Z's, mostly talking. Okay, so tell me about this Oppenheimer one. Well, we've all seen the epic stuff that Nolan can do with stuff like sci-fi and superhero films, right? Yeah. So just imagine what he can do with three hours straight of historical science talk. Well, taking it to the next level of epicness. Is it, though? Well, there's going to be epic music playing under every single word that's spoken. I didn't realize that. So anyway, with this movie, I think we have the opportunity to give the people what they've been dying for. What's that? Several J. Robert Oppenheimer sex scenes. Oh, finally. Father of the atomic bomb, more like father of a child who got by hooking up with a married woman. Catchy. And that famous I am become death quote, he's gonna say it while banging. Oh yeah, well, that's just fan service at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what else happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna kind of intertwine several storylines because if I wrote this in a linear way, Christopher Nolan would find and murder me. That makes sense. So what are the storylines other than his love life? Well, there's gonna be the whole Manhattan Project, right? He's gonna find and recruit scientists like he's planning a heist in a Guy Ritchie movie. Okay. There's gonna be this whole hearing to maybe revoke his security clearance during the Cold War, and his wife's gonna kick ass when she's questioned. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. And let me tell you, it's gonna kinda come out of nowhere. Oh, it is? Yeah, we're mostly gonna show her being an alcoholic the entire movie, and then there's also the Senate confirmation thing going on. Who's confirmation? This guy Strauss, who's been 
kind of plotting against Oppenheimer and suggesting he's a communist and stuff. Why is he so mad at Oppenheimer? Well, because he felt humiliated by Oppenheimer at a political thingy, and then also he thinks that Oppenheimer badmouthed him to Einstein. And so what happens with this hearing? Well, he's not gonna get confirmed, and one of the people that voted against him is John F. Kennedy. He's from the next big political period of history. Yeah, he is. I love it. Perfect way to set up the sequel. Well, Oppenheimer 2, The Rise of JFK is tight. Yeah, I mean, why not keep that door open, I guess? So how do these movies end? Well, we're gonna find out what Oppenheimer actually said to Einstein, and turns out it wasn't about Strauss at all. It was about how maybe they've set the destruction of the world in motion. And Barbie has a human vagina now. What? She's got a human vagina now, so she's gotta get that checked out, you know, professionally. It's important to get that checked out uh, by a professional, vaginally speaking. Please don't say vaginally. Vulva. So we think people leave these two movies feeling, you know, a sense of girl power and a healthy dose of nuclear holocaust dread. I still think it's gonna be hard to convince people to go watch both these movies on opening weekend. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, we just gotta come up with some catchy thing combining both movie names and make that blow up on social media. And you have a name? We do. Let's hear it. Well, we were thinking... Oppenbarbenheimen. Oh my god, what? We'll workshop that. Hi everybody, J. Robert Oppenheimer here. Thank you so much for watching. No. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I am become death and nope. I am designing a bomb. <laughs>